I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another 60 Seconds Challenge video. And I'm not going to tell you guys what this challenge is in today's episode because I want to do a challenge with you guys. I want you to figure out what this challenge is as you're watching the video. I'm not going to make it super obvious, but believe me, it's going to be a challenge for me as well because I've never done a challenge like this, guys. So no more talking. We're just going to jump right into it. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. So for this challenge, we're going to go Sar Obama for your mama because go big or go home, right? We definitely don't want to go home because I'm already home. We are going to beat this in one take, okay, guys? One take, Jay is in the building. I just walked in. I closed the door. I locked it. I sat my big fat booty cheeks here, and I am ready to do this all in one take. So we are going to grab the what's because I know everybody's going to be super thirsty. Grab this. Grab that. No, I was talking about the axe. Grab the axe. Do I want to grab the kids? That's the question. I think I want to grab Timmy. Where's the book? There's the book. Grab it. Okay. We got everything we need. Come on. There we go. Okay. So keep an eye on what I do in this video because it's not only a challenge for me, it's a challenge for you guys. So let it begin. Day one, son. We have no map, we have no med kit, but it's no problem because I am not gonna get mad, guys. I am gonna be happy this entire time because sometimes when I get a little bit mad, I fail some challenges that I'm trying to do in this episode and we definitely don't want that to happen. That is your first clue of today's episode. So what we're gonna do, guys, we are gonna prepare to scavenge and we are not gonna read the random notes. So the first person we are gonna send out today is good old Mary Jane because she never lets me down. Isn't that right, Mary Jane? You never let me down? Yeah, that's a lie. That's a bold face lie because sometimes she lets me down so much. That's why Timmy is called the MVP because he always brings the stuff. And good news, everyone. The government just announced that they will be dropping crates filled with supplies in our area. Finally, they are useful for something. We should head out to get those crates as soon as possible. Grabbing some protection gear might not be a bad idea. Okay, I always do this one because I feel like it's a 100% success rate. I've never done that scenario and have never not gotten some supplies. So we got two water and two food that's good enough for me. So we're going to give everybody some of that water and that soup. And we were discussing plans for our first meal that didn't feature tomato soup when we heard yells outside. We discovered they came from a small group of ragged survivors. Man, I don't care about no ragged survivors. They were a sorry sight and we weren't surprised when they requested aid. They asked us to provide anything we could, water, food, or medical supplies. Okay, we got some filthy beggars. So what are we going to give them? We have three and a quarter of water. And we have four and a quarter of food. So that means no and a quarter of giving you anything. Day seven, where's Mary Jane? She should have been back by now. And there's no news about Mary Jane. So she's still out there scavenging. Okay, that's good. And more random notes. I predict she's going to come back right now. I knew it. I smelled her on the way in. Look at her. You can smell that from a mile away. What did she bring back? Something good, please. She brought back a flashlight and that's it. Bruh. She brought back a flashlight. Okay. All right, enough of this plain tasteless water. Dolores is really craving a cup of coffee. Real true blue American coffee. The kind that you drink five cups and still feel sleepy. But where are we going to find that in the wasteland? Well, Dolores' favorite diner is, uh, used to be a few blocks away. Maybe someone should go on a coffee run, but who? Well, Dolores, if you want coffee, well, ding, 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 Dolores should go for the coffee. And I don't know the benefit of this scenario. I don't know why she would want the coffee. Other than she looks pretty normal now. So I'm assuming she got the coffee. Great. We got a whole pot of cold coffee. The taste is weird and we don't have any sugar or milk to give it flavor, but it'll do. It's a step from the bland, slightly irritated water we've been drinking. The pot only held a few cups worth of coffee and we gulped it all down in mere minutes. All of us are very alert and ready for anything for the next five or so minutes anyway. So wait, everybody's normal? Oh, so if you're successful in this coffee run, every single person in the bunker is going to look energized and awake. So it worked out in my favor. So we are going to prepare to scavenge. And the radio of ours has been silent for the past few hours. We need our news. We need our music. We all agree on that. And if it's refusing to cooperate, we need to meddle with it until it works. No, no meddling over here. And it's day 10. So everybody's going to get some of that good stuff. And I sent Mary Jane last time, but you know what? We're gonna send Mary Jane again, because I make up the rules. Day 11, 
If there's anyone who can rescue us from this hellish situation, it's our government. You can badmouth them all you want, but that's probably because you're either a naysayer or a commie. Yeah, you filthy commies. The government people are coming, and we should keep our eyes and ears open for any sign from them. Okay, we are gonna do that because we don't have any specific person that we're gonna get rescued by. I'd love to get one of the newer endings, but whichever ending I get first, that's fine because that's not part of the challenge. And good news, the government made a radio broadcast about extracting survivors from our area. Yup, that's good news. That is the best news. There isn't a lot of space down here and we can smell everything. When one of the wall bricks got loose today and revealed a hole, we felt pretty sick. It's the smell coming from the hole. It's terrible. Should we investigate and remove the source of this stench? I think we should. I really do think we should. And that's me making an executive decision. If Ted is sick, if anybody is not sick, okay, nobody's not sick, so I'm not even gonna go on my whole spiel. We lost the radio, though, but we got four food, six waters, six, 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 six waters, and we got another radio, and we got a map. I declare that July 7th, 2018 is National Mary Jane is the MVP day. And we didn't expect to get a phone call so soon after the atomic bomb drop, yet here we are. We can clearly hear a phone ringing outside. It must be the public phone booth on the other side of the street. Should someone go answer it? Yes, the MVP of course. Mrs. President, you have a phone call waiting for you on line three. And what was it, Mary Jane? What was the call? It was the people from the nearby town of Hill Valley. I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much that I'm going to give you guys the good stuff. And does anybody even need to go outside? I got everything that I need, except for a med kit. But you know what? I think we'll be fine. So nobody's going to go out. Everybody hangs out tonight. Party on me. We stumbled upon the remains of a bandit shanty town. Someone or something tore it down. Incidentally, amidst the rubble, we found a cat licking its paws nonchalantly, surrounded by blood and dismembered limbs. Ooh, family friendly. As we made our way back to the shelter, the cat followed. We can now hear its paws impatiently scratching our hatch. Should we let it inside? If you don't let a cat inside the bunker after it's scratching its claws on the door, you have no soul. I mean, I have no soul, but I'm saying you might have no soul. And there he is. His name is Sharko. When we opened the hatch, the cat jumped in and marched around the whole shelter, sniffing all of us. Every wall, corner, empty soup can, and piece of furniture. Finally, it picked a quiet place, sat down, and let out a deep sigh before taking a 12-hour nap. Its collar has Sharko etched into it. What kind of name is that? It's the greatest name in the freaking world. What's it to you? Nobody's gonna go outside. And more random notes. I feel like I'm gonna get rescued really quick here because I have three scenarios of people rescuing me. And I know that one of the endings with Sheriff Cove is like the FBI coming to you and getting you. So maybe I can go for that ending because I think I can make that one happen quick. Day 19, if Sheriff Cove considers our shelter its home now, we might as well try to get along. We could try to carry it around and pet it on the head. All cats like a good pet and Sherikov should hopefully be no exception. Otherwise, any attempt to touch the cat could lead to our untimely deaths. Should we try to play with him? I don't remember what to do here. I don't know if we pet him if we get hurt. I think Ted gets hurt. If we don't play with him, I don't know if he hurts us anyway, you know? We're just gonna go with the pets. And I think that he's gonna mess up Ted's face. I'm pretty sure he does. He made him sick. Ted seemed to have developed an allergy to our furry guest. Oh yeah, he's allergic. Okay. He's allergic to the kitty, but I don't have any medicine. If he dies, it's okay because we still have Dolores, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna prepare to scavenge. And Sherikov is still a fresh addition to our little family, so we need to keep an eye on it. And believe it or not, just today we noticed something else on its collar. It seems to be a metal plate with an address on it, and it's not far. Should we take a quick trip and see what's there? Yes! Because that is the beginning to another ending, which we want to get because we want to get rescued ASAP. And Timmy's gonna go out into the wasteland, and hopefully he can bring back his father a med kit. So let's send Timmy out with no gas mask because the fallout is mostly gone. And if you guys have never seen an episode of this before and wondering where the cat went... I think he's like chilling in the town for a little bit and then he'll come back eventually. So he's not dead. Just because he left the bunker doesn't mean he's dead. Day 25. Curiosity almost killed the cat. Sherico found a tiny wire sticking out from the ceiling and pulled it out. Plaster and debris fell on our table, topped off with a big meowing furball. What is this thing anyway? Nobody remembers it being there before. The cat might get angry if we take away the wire, so maybe it's best to leave it be? Or should we examine that wire? Okay. So this is the one with the FBI. I think they're right above the bunker and like they're doing some type of surveillance. If we check it out, then we're gonna trigger like that FBI ending. If we don't, then we're gonna get different endings. 
Maybe I kind of want to get the scientist ending, so let's say no for now because I don't really feel like getting that FBI ending. I feel like doing a longer challenge and Timmy is back. He didn't bring back a med kit, but our favorite ginger brought back one can of soup, two waters, and that's it, man. That's about it, man. I'm going to prepare to scavenge and Ted's dead anyway, guys. So I'm going to send him out. If he ends up not coming back, then he's not coming back. And alert, there's a gang of firefighters outside. What the heck? Okay, we're just going to use the lock. <laughs> it hasn't even been how many days? It hasn't even been 28 days. And there's people outside trying to bust our butts. We didn't think that a small padlock would stop them, but it turned out to be enough to discourage the unknown attackers. It seems that they gave this whole break in a fair shot, but ultimately gave up and left. Too bad that padlock is in no shape to be used again. We need to think of other ways to fight off the bandits and other soup-hungry barbarians. Okay, so now they're not gonna stop coming, so I need to get an ending right away, or it's gonna end very bad. It's gonna end a little, little bad. Day 30. A scientist, at least supposedly, arrived on our doorstep yelling, Dr. Sherikov, are you in there? He was looking for his lost cat, but kept referring to the pet as his favorite assistant. His research apparently can't go on without the cooperation of Dr. Sherikov. Since the cat doesn't seem keen on moving out of our bunker anytime soon, the doc wants us to compensate him by helping him with his project. In these circumstances, it might not be the worst idea to befriend other wastelanders, even the bat sh 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 crazy ones. So now I remember why the scientist ending is so difficult to get. It's because he wants you to do so many things. There are so many steps in order to get this ending. I don't think I'm going to get it because I don't have enough supplies, but we're going to try. The goal here is just to get rescued no matter what, but hopefully I can do the scientist ending. A traveling salesman paid us a visit today. He introduced himself as Willie. Well, hello, Willie. Apparently, business can do well even after the end of the world. He offers one soup in exchange for cards. He offers one water in exchange for the checkerboard. He offers two food in exchange for the gas mask. And he offers four in exchange for the gun. Yeah, right. I'm not going to give you the gun. But maybe I'll give you the gas mask. Oh, and if you guys are wondering what happened to Ted and why he's not here, I sent him out into the wasteland because, you know, he was sick and he was dying. He was on his last legs. And I was like, you know what? We might as well roll the dice and see what happens. And the dice rolled on death because he's not coming back. And the cat disappeared for a short while and came back with a note on its collar. It's signed by the scientist. He says he's being followed by a couple of weird men in hats and sunglasses, making him temporarily go into hiding. His note mentions the construction of some sort of transportation contraption. Few details were provided, but apparently he can get us out of this hole. It still needs to be stocked with supplies, which is where we come in and he wants us to stockpile several cans of soup. The doc will come pick them up soon. Okay, so that's what I need to do. I need to stockpile a bunch of soup. I forgot how much I need, but as soon as we give that to him, he's gonna come up and scoop us and we are gonna come with him into his lab and we are gonna live happily ever after. So let's do this, guys. And today during breakfast, we were startled when our map slid off the wall. Yes! Okay, there's a safe behind the wall and usually there's either food or there's soup. Hopefully there's gonna be food. Did I say food or soup? I mean food or water. I don't know what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking a whole bunch of things. And we got soup. What I tell you guys? We got the soup. We got the good old soup. Let's do this, man. We are going to beat this in today's episode. We're going to get that scientist ending. When conducting our daily supply count, we've noticed that a soup can was missing. Wait, we found a can of soup and now we're missing a can of soup? How does that even work? We're absolutely sure it was there just yesterday. That can only mean one thing. We have a soup thief among us. Now we just need to figure out who the culprit is. Okay, let's see here. So, we got good old Timmy, just staring off into the sky, minding his own business. We got Mary Jane, with what looks to be soup stains right on her shirt. And we have Dolores, looking beat up. And I don't know if that's a soup stain or some kind of other stain that I don't want to talk oh, about. But you know what? We're gonna blame Mary Jane! I think it was her. It had to have been her. Let's see if we were right. She still has that same blank look. And we know what you did last night, Mary Jane. And we're so disappointed in you, young lady. We didn't raise you to be a nasty soup thief. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we were right for blaming it all on her. And the doc came on our door to collect some supplies that he requested. They're important for the project, he said. We can trust him. After all, he's a doctor. We shared what we could. Thankfully, it was enough. The doc nodded with approval and promised he'd come back before disappearing with our supplies. We're still wondering if we made the right decision. And now we have negative four cans of soup. That's not good. 
That's still a bad. That's still a rare, rare bad. And Timmy and Mary Jane are in need of some physical exercise. Letting them run outside in the wasteland seems a bit too adventurous, but they could play tag inside the shelter. It's not like we have any expensive vases or antique dishes down here to be broken. Should we let the kids play? I don't think I've ever gotten this scenario, so I'm gonna say yes. And if something breaks, I'm gonna break something to theirs. Let's see. Everything seems to be good. The kids were ecstatic. Watching them play was a real treat. They looked so happy. When Mary Jane pushed Timmy around, he fell face first on an unopened soup can that was hidden in the corner of the shelter behind some empty bottles. What a lucky day for us. And we're sure Timmy's face will be just fine. And nobody's gonna go outside because there's still gunfire and screams outside. And we don't like gunfire and screams. And after all the days we spent down here, we're not exactly clean. They smell bad. The real, real bad. It didn't bother us until we noticed it. Okay. So uh, Mary Jane's stinking up the place. So we are going to use the bottle of poison. And that's going to make everybody smell nice and dandy. And a gang of thugs started banging on our door, ordering us to surrender and give all of our supplies. How do we respond to these scumbags? We grab an axe and we swing it across their ugly face. We were able to defend our home this time. What if they come back? Then we take the only weapon that we have, and we swing it across their face! Day 41. The mad scientist has asked us for one of us to join him in his lab for an experiment that's apparently vital to his project. We don't really know what to expect, but he says it has for research on wasteland diseases. Is this something we want to take part in? Who's the best one fit to survive a mysterious and potentially dangerous experiment? Okay, I'm gonna choose Mary Jane. And when I got this ending the first time, I thought that once we give her to the scientist, he's gonna end up turning her into mutant Mary Jane. But I don't think that she turns into mutant Mary Jane going with him. I think that she just comes back and is like crazy. And Mary Jane's back and she's looking better than ever. Mary Jane is back with a really weird look on her face. She refuses to say what she saw. Mary Jane's diet could use a little food. Mary Jane caught something nasty. Mary Jane went nuts. Mary Jane was injured. I wonder what that scientist put her through. She was only gone for like two days and we could really use some more supplies. We counted all of them today and the numbers did not make us happy. Time to do something about it. We know that a teacher from the local school managed to rescue a bunch of kids and lead them to a nearby building where they're relatively safe. And we could really use whatever they have. We could really use it, right? Well, I need to protect myself before I wreck myself. Hopefully they have like some guns, an ax, a padlock, something, because I know these bandits are gonna come in chimichanga hot, but I didn't get anything except four cans of soup. Well, there you go, guys. I know the bandits are gonna come. Yup, they just came, so we gotta use the gun. And now that we have no weapons, Dolores' kids are the last line of defense. Like, they're gonna slowly take them one by one, and then it's Dolores. So I have about two more times of the bandits coming before I get a game over. So the scientist needs to hurry up and get us quick. So many days have gone by. Come on, scientist. You gotta pick us up. You gotta rescue us. Let's go. And they're back. Who are they gonna take first, guys? Mary Jane or Timmy? I'm calling Timmy. Oh, they took Mary Jane first. You scumbags. We woke up to the sound of banging on our door. Someone has been at it like there's no tomorrow. In a manner of speaking, that might be true. Shall we open the door? I don't think it's going to be the Raiders. It's got to be the scientist. Come on. Come on. The end. Scientist. Yeah. Oh my God. We got the scientist ending on Sarbama on the first try. That's what I'm talking about. And it only took us 50 days in the game to do this challenge. Have you figured out what the challenge is yet, guys? I gave you guys small little clues throughout the video about what the challenge may be about. If you guys can get it right in the comments below, I'll be very, very impressed. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of 60 Seconds. If you guys enjoyed this video and want more 60 Second Challenges in the future, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.